and welcome to Cafe at Home and this is going to be our first uh, Monday segment. Um, on these uh, Monday segments we're going to do a series class that will span four weeks starting today. So uh, the project I'm doing today is going to be paper mache. I have two projects um, and each project is going to have two separate segments. So the first project is going to be how to make these really neat paper mache lanterns. And the second project is going to be making paper mache masks. And guess what? We're learning how to make paper mache today. So you will need a cup of flour, you will also need a tablespoon of salt. And paper mache is kind of messy, so I recommend wearing an apron. And I added the salt and the flour to my bowl first, and then I'm going to kind of mix it up with the whisk, which you will want to have. And then I have one and a quarter cups water, and this is going to be the wheat paste that we use to make our paper mache. Paper mache has two parts it's the wheat paste. And then it's going to be paper strips. So I have a bunch of white computer paper and I've torn it sort of lengthwise into strips. You want them to be about an inch wide. And you will also want a balloon. So these are just, they are 12 inch balloons. You can blow it up however big you want. This one's going to be a little bit smaller. So this is going to be the base that I cover, the, the structure that I cover with paper mache to make my lantern. And then you'll need something to hold it up. So I have this neat little base, but you can use um, anything that you can set your balloon into that will prop it upright while you work. So I'm just going to mix up this paper mache. And then at the very bottom of this comment, it's a really long comment because it covers four weeks worth of projects. At the very bottom is the link to a previous video that I did about pressed flowers. So these flowers are going to be pressed into the lantern on the second session. And there's a instructional video on how to make pressed flowers. I have some um, pressing away already between the pages of some of my favorite textbooks. So you want the consistency of the paper mache wheat paste to be pretty thin, kind of like pancake batter. So this is kind of how it will look. And then you're also going to want to have a trash can uh, with a bag in it to help clean up later. And I have my work area covered with this plastic tablecloth, but if you don't have one, um, you can just use large sheets of newspaper, but it's nice to have the plastic tablecloth. So I have pre-torn my paper sheets, and I'm just going to make them a little narrower because it's a little bit easier to work with that way. The wider ones will tend to wrinkle a little bit while you put them on. And you're going to want to do about three layers of paper mache to get this like kind of sturdy lantern form. So let's get started. I'm just going to put my whisk in my measuring cup and set it aside so it doesn't make a mess. and. I have an apron on because paper mache is kind of messy, so just be warned that if you do this project, prepare for a little bit of mess. So here we go. I'm just going to dip the paper into the wheat paste and then use my fingers to kind of squeegee the extra wheat paste off. And then it's just this like damp strip of paper and it's going to be kind of fragile it's 
It's already torn a little bit, but I'm just going to use it anyway because it doesn't really matter if these are placed on in any particular order. And I'm just going to sort of smooth as many of the wrinkles out as I can. I'm just going to keep going. So you're going to want to completely cover your balloon with paper mache. Um, except you're going to want to leave about the bottom section. So just I'm going to go just about right to here where the vase kind of covers it up. And I'm just going to make these as smooth as I can. I'm just going to make sure that I smooth as many of the wrinkles as I can so that they are nice and smooth to the surface. a little bit better if you have a smaller balloon like this to use smaller pieces of paper. So I'm just going to tear some of them in half so that they're shorter. And you just go through and you want to saturate each strip of paper in the wheat paste. And just kind of wipe off the extra wheat paste. If you have too much wheat paste stuck to the surface, it's just going to take longer to dry. If you want it to dry quickly, though, um, you can use a hair dryer, and I can show you how to do that. Once I have my three layers. So for the hair dryer, you'll want an electric hair dryer. And then if you want to do like the hands three free method that will just really sort of direct all of your hot air into one direction, um, you can get a paper grocery bag and set it up to catch all of the extra air from the hair dryer. And I will show you how to do that in just a moment. You can use any kind of size or shape of the paper for this project. Um, or any kind of scrap paper that you have, but I want to make my lanterns to be sort of translucent because they're going to hold a candle in them later on. And the idea behind mine was that you'll kind of see that silhouette of the flowers glowing with the candle inside. Just placing them on in any kind of way that seems to work out best. 
the overlapping of the paper is what is going to hold everything together. So you want to make sure that you get all of the surface evenly covered. And then to clean up, you're just going to want to use warm soapy water and a sponge and that should clean up any extra paper mache that you get anywhere. But this tablecloth is doing a really good job of catching the drips which are kind of occurring around the bowl here I have of my wheat paste. As you can see, I'm just about finished with my first layer of paper mache. This is going to be the last piece for this layer. And then we go the other way. We just kind of make sort of a crisscrossing pattern to make sure that I cover the whole like three full times. And I'm going to start using the longer pieces again because they go all the way around the circumference of this balloon here, except for the bottom section, which is where the candle is going to go later. I'm really excited about this project I made. One, two, three, so far. And then I have another one that I'm working on. I think they're gonna make nice centerpieces. I'm just coming up to the end of the second layer here. I have a lot of overlapping going on the top, which is going to end up being the bottom. So I'm just going to focus on doing the sides at this point. So I only need half a piece of these strips, so I'm going to rip them in half. Just keep applying the paper mache. It's okay if yours isn't as even as this because it's still going to hold together. I'm just a little bit specific about how I'm layering everything. Just kind of keep rotating as I work. 
so that I can fill in all of the gaps. You can kind of see the color of the balloon through the first layer and then the second layer and then when you get to the third layer you can't really see the color of the balloon anymore so that's how you know you've got enough layers for it to hold together. I don't know if you can hear it, but a cricket wandered into my house. I'm kind of happy about it because it's like I get to hear crickets from time to time. It's kind of relaxing. So this is just about three layers. I've just got a couple more gaps that I want to cover. And then I'm going to set up my hair dryer, but that's kind of an optional step. Otherwise, it's going to take about 12 to 24 hours, depending on how thick your wheat paste is for this to dry. And then the, using the hair dryer method cuts down on that a lot. but you want it to be completely dry before you go to the next step. The next step is to apply the pressed flowers. And if it's too mushy, it's just gonna be difficult. But when you apply the flower part, you're going to add a glue and water mixture with a layer of tissue paper over that so that they are kind of adhered nicely to the lantern and the petals won't fall off. So there's like actually a thin layer of tissue paper over these. But that's next time. I hope you join us for a Cap at Home Monday series. If you do a paper mache project, we'd love to see it in the comments section of this video. Now I'm going to set up my little drying booth, just so as I say that I keep seeing spots that I missed. Oh no, I missed a spot. Alright, I can continue to work on this. I'm going to set up the drying booth just so that you can see how I did it, because it will really speed the drying process up a lot. I'm just going to step off screen to wash my hands and then I will show you how to set up a drying booth using a hair dryer and a paper bag.
on its side. And then I'm going to put my project inside the bag. And this will catch all of the extra air so that it directs it at the project. And I'm just going to prop up my hair dryer. my setup um, and my paper lantern should be dried in about 20 to 30 minutes so I hope you enjoyed this cap at home paper mache series and we'll see you next week